early memories for me of Bells are those epic clashes between Oki and Karen. Oki, in my mind, is, is the best goofy footer to ever surf it out here. Tom Curran, this guy is just a natural. Everyone tried to mirror his style as a kid. If you're a goofy footer, you kind of lent more towards the, the Mark Ocalupo crew. I don't think in the history of the Bells Beach event have we seen a goofy footer attack Bells Beach better than Oki. And I think all the goofy footers on tour today still have him as a yardstick. We've seen Oki and Karen clash a lot in their uh, professional careers, and it's pretty even between those two. You know, to see it replicated out here this year is going to be just amazing. I really hope there's some juice out there and these guys get the opportunity to show us their undeniable style. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Two legends hitting the water once again in the heritage heat of the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach presented by Bonsoy. Tom Curran representing Santa Barbara, California and the United States taking on Mark Ocalupo. The 99 world champ representing Cronulla, living by Snapper Rocks for a long time now. Goofy versus regular. This is as good as it gets. Joe Trapel with Wayne Rabbit Bartholomew. Richie Lovett here for the call. Bugs, so many stories. Where do we begin with this matchup? I wouldn't mind if you started with the relationship that you have with Tom Curran. That started when Tom was just a, a little grommet back in the day. Yeah, well, uh there was one classic time when Tommy Curran, he flew by himself as a 15-year-old, flew from L.A. to Paris, got the, a, a train from Paris to Bayonne, and then somehow found his way to my where I was staying. First of all, let's see him surf. Tom Curran with the Black Beauty from Channel Islands has the foam climb to get things started. And still with the style that changed everything in pro surfing, connecting this so incredibly well. And he will redirect on the whitewater. Tommy looking smooth. Nice glide out of his equipment. You never know what he's going to put under his feet. And now finding the pocket. Well done, Tommy Curran getting the finish on the inside with that classic little fade. That extra bonus turn of the whitewater he's been doing since the 80s. Ah, uh, the classic style. It's still there. And have a look. Tom's all sucked up. He's ready to go. And uh, well, the classic spray on the Black Beauty, the black band along the rail there. And, and you know, it just, uh, my mind's going straight back to the 85 heat. It just keeps going there. <laughs> that clash, Tom Curran, Mark Ocalupo, 86 semi-final was everything in pro surfing. He talked about one of the greatest heats of all time. Now we're looking to replicate here in 2023. Bugs, what'd you see here? No, oh, I just see this the smoothest silk Tom Curran. It's just, oh. you know, timeless surfing. Just silky smooth. You know, even when he goes past this section, he, he makes the most of the bowl and beautiful cut back there by Tommy. And then as he moves in, look at that. Board above the lip line, black beauty in all its glory. That Tommy Curran bottom turn, Rich. Oh. Look at this. Oh, just so poised and uh, you know it just in the uh, lead up little package there you talked about Ronnie was talking about just how many people tried to emulate his style you know um, I was definitely one of those guys you know and uh, for good reason he's just so graceful on the wave uh, nothing ever looks like too crazy difficult it's so smooth he's got this incredible knack of, of just making uh, you know, everything just looks so aesthetically beautiful on a wave. Effortless style, precision lines that defined an era. Tom Curran, a three-time world champ. Steph Gilmore can't help herself. She's allowed to do this. She can just enjoy this great showcase of talent. For her, it's uh, she's probably feels so privileged to be in the water, but I'm sure Tom and Aki are happy looking at an eight-time world champ enjoying the show from the water right there, Bucks. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, what a sign of respect and, and friendship and just our admiration. Stephanie staying in the, in the water. Uh, you know, she, she does surf um, snap a lot with Oki and uh, obviously I would say Stephanie also heavily influenced by Tom Curran's style. And especially musically as well. They've had quite a few jam sessions. Aki's into music too. There's a lot of comparables with these guys. The other night at Claw Warbrick's 80th birthday party. 
one of the founders of Rip Curl. These two guys were having a dance off. <laughs> so epic. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't take much for Oct to, to get on the dance floor or to have a sing or get on the bongos, whatever's around. You know, Oki just loves to get involved. And uh, I was just going to make a point there. Like, Curran, you know, these days, I, I don't know how much he rides the Black Beauty. Uh, more so opting for the twin fins and, and crazy looking surfboards. But, you know, he, just being able to adjust so quickly, because this thing looks like a fair bit longer than what he's normally riding and, and just looks so smooth on that opening ride. Dropped a really good score, too. Oh, 7.67. That's uh, really set a high scale for this heat drawing uh, close to the excellent range and you know when you when you slowed that wave down you really saw that unbelievable technique and the smooth style the application black beauty you know, and and he mentioned the other night that the winner of this heat gets a, a simon anderson replica 81 model and and i think ronnie asked to tom what are you writing he said last time you were here you're writing a skimboard <laughs> <laughs> and tom said tom said oh i got black beauty which means he's got the actual total replica Black Beauty. Gosh, you love that. Aki, the 1999 world champion. And I remember this tagline in the magazine. So quoting Wayne Rabbit Bartholomew saying that 99 world title was one of the greatest comebacks in the sport. In any sport. In any sport, Joe, seriously. I mean, you know, I spent a lot of time with Hockey when he was on his on his uh, sabbatical downtime. As you see this uh, beautiful shot of uh, Tommy Khan. That bottom turn is timeless. And look at that above the lip line. That looks like 86 right there. <laughs> oh, it absolutely does. And, uh, you know, what sticks out in my mind is Tom's bottom turn and just how low he gets and really leans on that toe side rail. I, I think it's something that Kelly adopted. You know, obviously, uh, you know, I guess Tom sort of passed the baton onto Kelly in a way, but I feel like Kelly was a sponge in terms of looking at Tom and, and taking on a lot of the technique. Oh, a clear lineage there. You know, uh, Kelly definitely uh, grew up with, with Tommy Curran on his wall for absolute sure. And, and then the, the handing of the baton, as you say, generationally. As we have some action out the back, waiting to see the opener from Mark Ocalupo, the 99 world champ. For the best ever at Pels, nope. and he will get caught up on the first section. So, a little wipeout mm. for Ock. And and Ock's in Ock's in really good shape. I mean, he has been surfing, surfing, surfing. He's um, you know, out at Snapper. Gosh, his his backhand is still absolutely flawless. I, I mean, he's in the best surf shape he's been in for years. So this this should be all time. I wonder whether there was a little bit of pressure involved in that first wave with, you know, Oki would have heard that 7.67 and he would have gone, oh, come on, let's go. <laughs> As we take a look at the numbers in this heritage sheet, three world titles for Tommy Curran, one for Akalupo, which came after his sabbatical. Aki actually spent some time out of the water, got out of shape and came back. It's a, an amazing comeback story to form and won his title in 99. His, uh, Bell's title is uh, so fun to look back on because he was coming back into form with the Skins event and all warming up to that 99 world title. Curran ringing the bell multiple times as we have Aki up after the fall. Graceful cut back. He's got some white water to punch out right there. Great reaction from Akalupo. And now he will connect this one through the flats. And Aki will step off there, brilliant in his approach. And we talk about this rivalry, and there's so much love and respect for these two legends. Aki reflects on the first time he ever saw Tom Curran come to compete at an event in Cronulla. And he just said, I want to surf like that. They were really aware of each other. This was an amazing generation coming through. You know, you'd have to, you've got to add Tommy Carroll to this whole mm -hmm. conversation Absolutely. too. This, this generation coming in, Martin Potter, it was amazing. Damien Hartman, Bart Lynch, Gary Kong Elkin, this generation coming through, it was just after ours and it, 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 it was unbelievable. But Karen and Oki were really at the helm of, of the, um, uh, the power surfing. I, I, I maintain that Karen, I mean, Oki and Tom Carroll just had that power in their legs. And Tommy Curran was seen in, in Hossigal running the sand dunes to build up his, his leg muscles. 
And it's so true because Tommy Carroll had been the first Goofy to really wow the crowd at Bells. And, and then Aki stepped into play out here as the man to beat and showing that going backside to Bells was not a disadvantage. <laughs> and I mean, another great goofy footer from the top, Derek Ho. I mean, it was just an incredible era. Derek came just before these guys. He was actually the 93 world champion. He, he, he split up the um, uh, the slated domination. So he was just a, probably a little bit later than these guys. But he, I think he was still in, in the mix with this crew. I mean, it was an amazing generation. And uh, he's got to be loving this. Nice little ride on the Red Bull ski as his first number comes in. 5.5 to go with the 1.0. Let's get some special insight from Britt Merrick himself on Tom's equipment. Britt's hanging out with Laura. <laughs> yes, guys, down here with one of the tallest shapers on the universe, <laughs> on the planet, sorry. I'm standing on a step just to, to reach Britt Merrick here, but Britt is a uh, shaper of Tom Curran. What is Tom riding out there? You just told me a pretty rad story. Yeah, it's pretty cool. He's actually riding the exact same board that he rode in 1986 against Saki in that famous heat. And uh, he grabbed it from a local retail store here, just took it off the rack. It's a 6'3 Black Beauty. And uh, same board, it's pretty cool. He's looking pretty good on it all these years later. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. It was 767 to start off there. And uh, apparently he's got some uh, cool fins in as well. Yeah, yeah. Same exact board from 86, a Black Beauty, but different fins. He's riding these S wings that our friend Shabby out of France makes. And uh, they're trippy fin. I, Tom really likes him. I see him out at RingCon all the time with him, but uh, working for him. Absolutely amazing. Well, thanks for the insight there, Britt, and uh, congrats on all your uh, amazing success with all the people on tour. Uh, thanks, Laura. Appreciate it. Britt Merrick, what a hero as we look at Tom Curran putting this one together with style and grace. He beat a lot of sections out the back and now reforming it on his backhand. Curran taking control early in this matchup. Remember, Tommy got the battle at Jay Bay with a 10 against Aki. It was bombing Jeffries Bay. Aki got the next decision at Bells and looks like he's been waiting for some payback bucks. Yeah, Tom's, uh, you know, Rob, it's amazing when you hear about it. He's just, uh, he picked it off the rack, but it is the replica uh, of, the, of Black Beauty. And, you know what I, uh, amazed me is that even on that first wave, particularly that one, the way he planes across the dead sections, Richie, mm. you know, I mean, it's, it's just effortless. And, and he gets to the, that whole new section and then actually has to wind his way back on his back end. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much flow and and uh, just momentum on that board. It just seems to be traveling over the sections really well. There's a picture of the fins, the crazy looking things that, that Tom's riding. And uh, can you, know. you digest that, Richie? You, you love dissecting fins. Yeah. But there's Where do you that, go with those? I don't know, man. It's, um, th there's obviously something in that that, that Tom really likes. Uh, I feel like the, the top of those tips of those fins would be kind of, there'd be a fair bit of flex in it. So maybe that's the part that Tom likes, but it's certainly looking like working for him on, on this wave. Have a look at the glide here, just over this first section. No pumping at all, just traveling, keeping all the speed down the line here. Tom, just that effortless style, comes through this little section here. He's just weaving, watching for his next little moment. A nice backhand hit there. Just silky smooth. And uh, he's going to put his little buddy Oki in a bit of a situation here. <laughs> I mean, when he turned left on that wave, I started having these flashbacks of Huntington Beach. Oh, oh big blast there. The on. backhand of Mark Acalupo. This guy doesn't age. He's done that so many times here at Pals Beach. What a treat to watch. Oh, that was a dismount. It's a reminder of you that he was on Dancing with the Stars years ago here in Australia. Just tap dancing his way off his board, but what a connection for one of the best to ever do it at Bells. Well, I think he's going to get a good score there because he got a 5-5 five five on that first wave. It was yep. another wave that ended up in the white water. He only got the big move on the outside. That was a bigger one. Well, this is a great contrast of approach. You know, we've got the silky smooth, uh, forehand attack, but we've got this aggressive approach from Oki, and that was just a trademark backhand snap from the Ock. Watch the deep bottom turn here, the hand on the rail, leans into it, and then transfer of weight and energy up into the lip, and we've seen him do that so many times. Love watching this. Wow, this is a flashback to 86 right here, Joe. Look at this deep bottom turn that Richie's touch talking about. He grabs the rail, so many surfers around the world, you know, Owen Wright, you know, Caroline Marks. I mean, so many have tried to emulate that bottom turn. 
as good as it gets. I remember the Hopgoods would study tape of hockey. They'd always say, hand down, man down. Took the words out of my mouth. They were two of the uh, kind of modern day pros that I, I think were were probably most influenced in terms of their styles. Uh, you know, so many of them, but it's great to do the tour with the with the Hopgoods for many years. And uh, you know, we all had the we all had the advantage of, of actually competing with hockey in very special years. All time connection for Mark Akalupo. Ah, it might be my favorite wave of the heat so far. Scores coming in from this big battle. We'll take a Bonsoy brew break. Back for more after this. Great time to be watching pro surfing. Two of the all-time crates going head to head at Bells Beach. Mark Akalupo and Tom Curran. This rivalry continues for so many great stories. Thanks for being with us on the Harvey Norman host set. Joe Trapel, Wayne Rabbit, Bartholomew, and Richie Lovett. When we opened up this clash, Bugs, you had a brilliant story about a young Tommy Curran flying to join you over in France. Yeah, Joey. Uh, this 15-year-old kid, he flew from LA to Paris, got a train from Bay down to Bayonne, somehow made his way to, to where my, I had a little beach shack right on Senors when there's no one around, 1981. The very next morning at dawn, I heard this kid going, Rab, and I knew something was on. I walked up and this sand spit that I'd seen the days before had turned into Kira. It was six foot barreling, and Tom Curran and I had a three hour surf by ourselves, no one else around. And I'm in the barrel, he's looking in, I'm paddling out looking going, oh my God, this kid is incredibly good in the barrel. And it was just a really special session, you know? Awesome, man. Yeah, it was. and we spent time, we played tennis, we swapped boards, he gave me his Almeric twin fin and that sort of uh, sparked something in me. I was one of the last holdouts on the single fin and he had a big, that had a big, uh, bit effect, a big effect on my next couple of years. Oh, I love that. So many great stories with the legends of the sport, Tom Curran, Mark Ocalupo, their famous semi-final will be talked about forever back in 1986. It would have been Tom Carroll who ended up winning that final that day, but Tom Curran going on to winning the world championship. And he's uh, probably as elusive as it gets, the mystique of, of Tom Curran. He had all these stories around him where he'd get on a plane flight and not show up at the destination, or people would get a hire car and they'd look under the seat and it'd be an uncashed check from prize money for Tom Curran. I mean, how many stories like that have we heard over the years, Richie? Yeah, there's been so much mystique around Tom and, you know, I, that adds to the whole kind of presence and, you know, the elusiveness and it's like, whoa, there he is, you know, I get a glimpse of him. I mean, it's was, it was like MPs handed the baton to Tom Curran. 
Uh, here we see a big set, but Maurice Cole's got some classic Tom Curran stories. You know, one time he was cleaning out a shaping bay over in France, and, and at the bottom he picked up and said, what's this? It is years later, he picked up a first prize check from the Stubbies Classic for $12,000. No way. Yeah, in the corner under the, under a pile of foam. <laughs> oh Rumors had it, people have gone to his home, Tom Curran's in Santa Barbara, and seen his uh, world title trophy. Is, uh, you know, it's got a plant in there, you know, <laughs> growing out of it, just on the side. Uh, the stories from Tom Curran are priceless. And then there's similarities, like for Mark Ocalupo, you know, leaving the sport for different times. But it nicknamed the Raging Bull for good reason. Just charging with so much power and authority. And meanwhile, that score, remember? That one-turn maneuver that we saw before we went to break came in at an eight-point ride, so Aki is sitting out in front. And just to let you guys know, these two legends have kindly offered to donate their Heritage Heat surfboards to One Wave to support our preventative mental health programs. So you can check out the website, One Wave is all it takes.com forward slash bells. Bidding is going to be open on Sunday, the 10th of April at 7 a.m. and will close Thursday, the 13th of April at 5 p.m. So up for auction and for a wonderful cause. Well, that, that is a wonderful cause and it's, it's really great to see legends of the sport, you know, giving to a, a great charity. And But of course, one of them will be walking away with that, that Simon e. Anderson special uh, Rich, I mean, that's a pretty classic board. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And obviously, uh, Simon Anderson rode that to victory at the 81, the famous 81 Bells Classic that, you know, it was giant ways, but perfectly groomed. And and uh, Simon just dominated that day. He sure did. He dominated the whole event. And it was the ushering of, of a new era with the thruster. So there's, there's just lots of story and lots of lineage and history in amongst this. And these two guys, gosh, I'll tell you what, that, that one turn of Oki was unbelievable, and it was the, the biggest wave I've seen today. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, you might think, well, Tom had those, you know, the long wave and all the all the turns and the flow and everything, but it, you just cannot deny how critical uh, and the impact of that one backhand hook that Oki did, uh, real vintage stuff. We talk about Kelly with longevity, but you've got to put Oki in this conversation. How about that big hook? He was so great. From the water, you can really see it. And uh, is it, you know, an overhead wave? Gosh, that, that so looks, that, it, it's so reminiscent of 86 right here. Yeah, look at this stuff and that channel's just digging into the, to the bottom of the face of the wave. And then Ock redirects, puts all the weight. Look how compressed he is right at this moment here. Comes down just before the lip. And uh, I mean, there's, there's kids, millions of kids around the world who tried to do the little hand, you know, signal of the hand kind of positioning that Aki had, and it's still alive and well in front of us today. Can we put more, more time on the clock, please? please? Yeah, please. Another, please. another hour or two. <laughs> and here we see a set. Now, Tommy Curran's got priority here, so now we go into a battle, a, a battle royale for the last five minutes. Is there a Misto Curran situation happening? So I was going to say, sorry Joe, uh, you know, we, we've seen Kelly in the modern era just, you know, will waves to turn up, but you must have seen Tom pull waves out, just miraculously appear and, you know, heat win. Oh, he was famous for it. So many great stories with Tom Curran and Mark Ocalupo. Remember, these two guys have offered up to donate their Heritage Heat surfboards to One Wave to support our preventative mental health programs. There is the URL on the bottom of your screen. One Wave is all it takes.com forward slash bells. Bidding is going to open on Sunday, the 10th of April at 7 a.m., closing Thursday, the 13th of April at 5 p.m. and going to a great cause. I got my hands on Oxboard, the JS with the channel bottom. Wow, that felt like some magic. And then the famous black beauty for Tom Curran, getting a piece of history of the replica of what he rode back in that 86 semifinal. You know, um, Richie, to your point, there were so many instances when Tom, there was one time, I don't know where we were, I think somewhere in California, it wasn't Huntington Beach though, and, he, and Tom went off to the, the side, like he went about 40 meters away from the contest area where there was no waves. He sat for like three quarters of the heat and, and everyone's going, look, he has finally blown it. 
and seriously out of nowhere on a bank that wasn't even there came this misto wave and he got a nine and then um i mean he won the heat it was just so everyone went yep that's a tom current special we talk about that mystique and creating moments for himself he's going to need to do it now chasing a 5.84 because there is a special trophy on the line rosie what do we have that's right guys i found it in the red bull athlete zone this the 1981 board ridden by simon Simon Anderson. It's a replica shaped by Simon Anderson himself in his Brookvale factory. But this is the unveiling of the thruster that we saw back in that famous Easter Saturday uh, where Simon Anderson won the Ripco Pro Bells Beach. Um, we owe a lot of debt for, to him for creating this thruster. As you can see, um, it's got the Aki vs. Curran heritage heat there. This will be the trophy for the winner of this heat. So although the two guys, Aki and Curran, will be donating their board, this is what they'll get to take home. Well, the lucky one well, the replica 81 Simon Anderson thruster it's a beauty absolute beauty thank you for finding that for us Rosie Hodge that board changed everything not just at Bells but in surfing history still the most common setup on the world's best surfboards that three fin setup known as the thruster Simon won a big surf and small surf on the final day in 81 and he was able to really change surfboard history everyone started moving from the twin fins and realizing they need the versatility of the three fin setup yeah that day that that huge day you know, simon had a, an amazing heat with bobby owens and bobby you know bobby was the master of sunset beach just uh you know one of the a guy that sh should have really had a much bigger name than he has you know i mean bobby owens at sunset beach was such a master and, and he and him and Simon had this unbelievable heat out here. It was in the afternoon that the swell had probably dropped to about 12 foot and it was perfect. Uh, it was seriously 15 to 18 foot um, earlier in the day and it was such perfect bells and these two went at it. it I mean, Bobby was a hard drawer in that first round and, um, and Simon won that and went on to win the 81 bells. Awesome. So, so cool. I love that. Bobby's still hanging around the North Shore, so shooting great photos of the next generation as we check out Mark Ocalupo. Weaving down to the bottom, connecting off the top once again. Beautiful arc once again. His timing unbelievable. When this wave changes shape, it's like he already knows it's going to happen. Never stumbling. There's the jam there for Aki, and he will step off. Looking to improve on a 5.5, heading to the final minute. And trying to make it two in a row of Bells against Tommy Curran. They've had so many battles in the CT format outside of that famous semifinal as well. And gosh, it's still almost dead even when you look at their history. We, you know, this is like the Ali Fraser, the Rumble in the Jungle. Like, we, you know what? We're going to have to have a rematch. They're not going to finish on this one. Uh, we could have a whole series of this on tour, and there wouldn't be one complaint. It would be our favorite thing. They've given us so much. No. For so many years, and they're still doing it today. What do you see here, Richie? Oh, look at the speed that Ock gets. Takes the high line. There's the trademark bottom turn up and over the foam, and he gets a nice big round swooping cutback here. And uh, this is just unbelievable to watch. I was, you know, your comment, Rab, when you were talking about, well, hang on, Tom, is this the comeback wave? How good is this? Tom Curran, 58 years of age, coming in on his final wave. <laughs> Akalupo, 56 years of age. These guys still putting on an incredible show. Everyone's on their feet celebrating these two legends. <laughs> we'll have one final score for Tommy Curran to come through. Left chasing a 5.84, but it's looking like it's going to be Aki making it two in a row at Bells. Uh, he looks pretty pleased with himself, too. That's pretty classic. On one massive maneuver. Yeah, this meant something to Mark Akalupo. He's He's really been surfing a lot and, and he's in great surf condition. And even though he fell on that first wave, I, I kind of went, well, you know what? I know he's how good he's been surfing. I feel like we need to do this twice a year at Bells and at Jay Bay. <laughs> I love yeah. your thought there, Rich. And but don't forget that they had the unbelievable rivalry at, at Huntington Beach yeah. during the OP Pro Days as well. OK, there we go. Another one there at the US Open. But for Ock as well, that longevity that he's had, you know, being timeless. Uh, he was the oldest world champ at the time when he did win in 1999. Kelly kind of changed that. 
a little bit later. But for Ock to come back when people were kind of retiring at his age and he was just heating up. Let's really celebrate this Harvey Norman recap in this heritage heat. Tom Kern versus Mark Akalubo. I love that Tom got off to a great start here, Bugs. He sure did. This really thrilled everybody. Just this, this, seeing Tom Kern in such fine form, Rich. Smooth uh, as silk. Yeah, just the rail game. Uh, it'll never go out of fashion, but uh, neither will this turn here. And that was the defining moment in this heat. Vintage jockey on his backhand, just playing with the Bells Bowl. And uh, the best bottom turn by a goofy footer in the game. Hands down and still doing it today. As you see the celebration, way to go, Ock. Taking out this Heritage Series yeah. against Tom Curran and Curran enjoying yeah. the fans like yeah, he did so it. many times here at the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach presented by Bon no, Soy. Okay. Let's enjoy this moment and get fired up for the round of 16 for the men. Coming up with Joao Chianca and Matthew McGillivray right after this. good is my job to be standing between two absolute legends obviously the icon the heritage heat was insane Mark Akalupo you took that one out again over Tom Curran that eight-point ride was absolutely phenomenal talk us through that heat and the feelings of surfing against your good friend and one of your rivals Tom Curran yeah yeah huge rival and good friend now uh, you know I, I had an early surf and I was thinking these conditions really suit Tom because I remember he always just made these conditions look really good and then he got that 7-6 and I was like, yep, nothing's changed. Um, but, you know, like, I kind of channeled my Matt Hoy and rode a channel bottom, a really deep one, and uh, probably not the right board to ride because it was tracking out out there. Sorry for all the falls. But, you know, the one turn did feel good. For me, it felt a little sticky. Um, but the boys said it looked good, so I'm happy about that. Um, you know, I was stoked to win. You know, Quill's holding a Simon Anderson thruster and... Uh, and that board is just, you know, you know what Simon done out here and the, invented the thruster was just change, revolutionised surfing. And, um, you know, I'll take my hat off to... And thank you to Simon and thank you to Claw. It was his 80th birthday the other day and, and I went to the party and it was so good. Uh, he's just done so much in his excitement. He's just never changed. And, you know, all those years, you know, with Claw rubbing his hands together saying it's going to be good and I would just get as, as excited, if not more than him. Um, <laughs> To win that board is epic. I want to thank WSL, you know, and now, and Scotty Hargraves, when I rang him, he made it happen. Uh, Starkey, um, you know, obviously, at JS for the Channel Bottom and Billabong. Um, but, uh, you know, I want to say hello to my kids, everyone at home, you know, my, my uh, fiance Jess, and, uh, you know, Rosie, I'm stoked, you know. Just to have a master in a heritage heat, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Big crowd. And uh, even though this, yeah, surfing probably wasn't as good as it could have been, conditions are tough, but I'm stoked. Oh, we love to see it, Aki. Thank you so much for being here. Well, we are going to ask the founder of the Ripcoil Pro Bells Beach and the founder of Ripcoil to hand over this replica board. Aki, this is all yours. Wow. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Happy birthday again. Congratulations. Yes. Well deserved. <laughs> Yay. All right, you guys.